Well, good morning. TGIF today. Yes, it's Friday. Been a, the week's gone real fast. We had this snowstorm. I'm working like crazy on the saws, fixing snow blowers for people, a few generators. Shop's been busy. Not bad. A few people couldn't make it in yesterday, but it's understandable. We had a foot of snow and only essential services were kind of open. Shell even shut the daycare down for the day, which is fine because most of the kids weren't making it in anyway. So that's kind of like, kind of like the daycares are like schools. If they aren't open, then the daycare isn't. But some families still need it if they have working parents. So she has to consider that and she, and she has. So this morning, um, I just want to share a little McCullough stuff with you. I've, um, my dad dealt me this uh, hot saw with the brand new 101 card engine. And I'm just going over it just to try to familiarize myself with them. It's been a lot of years since I've been working on them. Done a little bit with Bucking, but I'm going to be doing a bunch more. So this is the original starter off it. This motor originally had a three quarter inch, uh, straight crankshaft in it with a quarter inch keyway slot and they they ran them on mini bikes and, and different type of applications that Mr. Robert McCullough built for all sorts of different rigs. He was quite an inventor. He made planes and the helicopter thing he made was, was really cool if you look up the McCullough history and check out his little gyrocraft copter that he invented. It was really cool. Along as uh, many other things for the war and stuff. Um, he used to make these uh, drone things that the army would shoot out of the sky or whatever. But anyways, I have set up on the bench right now a um, an old 91B one that's an old engine uh, uh, that's I just scored from someone years ago. I've never thrown it out. The piston's in good shape. It's, not, it's almost not bad. It's got an old Hartman clutch on it, racing clutch for go-karting, butt mount on it. So I just thought I'd do the timing on this, you know, checking how the, what the points are set at and <coughs> make sure they're timed and familiarize myself back with the points and condenser timing of them. Um, a lot of all your new stuff now has CDI ignition uh, coils, eh? No more points and condensers. Years ago, before um, good tools were around, like timing lights and... Uh, Oh, meters and all that. This is back in the 60s. This is the original owner's manual. My mom copied from the original one that I still have at my dad's house for the 91B1 engine. And it explains in here how to set the breaker points. Uh, a certain, you know, uh, setting um, you would do. You would do them... Um, Around 15 thou, I believe we used to set them at. Let me just check that though. The clear uh, magneto output. Okay. Uh, where are we at here? Clearance that. Okay, let's just see here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you'd set up like in here, it gives you all the instructions how to um, set a protractor up on the crankshaft, which I just went to the dollar store and bought a little kid's math set. So I got a protractor there and I got timing light and stuff. Um, solely rotate the crankshaft clockwise, 26 degrees. Da, 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 da. Okay, so I'm going to set all that up another time and I'm going to show you how to do it with that. Um, break, breaker point gap on engines requires the use of 18 thou inch feeler gauge and Mac 91 series and 15 on the Mac 101s. Okay. So there you go. They're different on the two, two motors. So I'm going to, uh, build this, build that system and make that up later on when I uh, do my Mac cart engines, um, off my old vintage go-kart. But today I'm just going to show you here of how it, how it works, like right now, this 91B1 uh, has actually a set of Tecumseh points in it, someone put in it that I noticed. Um, obviously they must've worked in these as well as, as, as same as the McCullough ones or whoever made them for McCullough, Wico or Wico or I don't know who made them. 
I'll find that out. I'll let you know. My acres will tell me or my dad will. So anyways, the way I used to do them on Mini Max and 850s, or not 850s because they had electronic ignition, 81s maybe. I can't remember the exact series of saws. So for now, what you do is you have an ohmmeter with your, your beeping mode here, eh? So you take your wire off the coil that runs from the points. Let's get you down here and show you this. Okay, let's move a couple things. So you're on here. Here's your here's your um your lead that would come off the points to the coil, then you'd have another wire on the coil that would go to a switch, which in cart engines, we never usually ran. My dad did set up a switch one time on my cart actually, and uh, I was racing in the rain and the thing gave me a shock. It uh, wasn't hooked up right. It was shocking me through the seat bolts of the cart. I had to lift myself up and get in the pits and pull the wire off. It was kind of funny. That's a lot of voltage going through my, my body there. Put my hair straight back in. So anyways, let's get back to this. Take your ohmmeter. You can have a light or the beeping sound. And on the flywheel on these, if you notice almost directly across from the keyway, there's an arrow on these flywheels and, and three, three lines. The idea of it is, is this arrow on these lines, the line should be when, the, when, the, when it beeps or the points are actually starting to open, the lines should be on the inside of the coil laminates and the middle line should be straight to the laminate in the center of the coil. Let's test this one and see where it's at. I've never even checked even what the gaps of the points were on this thing. I just dusted it off and, and brought it in here to show you. So let's check her out. Dip to ground. Okay. Okay, so they're closed right now. I'm turning it. The lines are getting close to the coil. Right there, they should open. It is not though. Um, now it is, and that's roughly, I would say three quarters of an inch past where it should. So um, now, so now they're open and obviously they're gonna close again here in a second. You'll hear it beeping again. Okay, let's recheck it one more time. Same, same thing, about three quarters past. So um, let me think about this right now. So should the points be more closed or more open? I'm thinking more open. Uh, let's have a look at what they're at. I think I got a, yeah, I got a set of feeler gauges here. Yeah, I just found Johnny's toolbox. Okay, let's pull this flywheel off. Try to find where we, uh, when they're fully open. There's a little cam lobe on the crankshaft. And you can kind of move the move it around, crank around, and see where it's fully open. Okay, they look like they're fully open right there. Let's check where they're at. And what do we got here? There's 13. What did I know? What did I say? Remember, 13 and 15, right? Back to that page. 18 they figure for Mac 91's feeler gauge and 91 series and then okay 18 yeah okay 13 almost goes in 12 I would say they're about 10. Do I even have an 18 on here? Uh, I got 20. Let's go. Come on. Uh, 20, so. I'll tell you what, let's just open them up and see what happens. Okay, so we all know. So we loosen this one little bolt here. 
they used to have a little spot where you could actually have a little notch in them so these Tecumseh ones don't have that but we're just going to open them up just a bit there we go and tighten the screw back up so where are we at now uh, So it's just touching on 20. Now let's put it back on and just see where we're at. So I, I know myself that uh, which way we need to move them when you're uh, not lining up like that. This will work on your SPU 125 and colors, your um, 1010s and whatnot too. Okay, so get a better ground here. Right. We got nothing, nothing now. Hmm. What did I do? Keyway fell out. It doesn't help, eh? Come on, Donnie. Did I go too far? Okay. Let's get this back on. See if we can keep that keyway there. Okay. You know what? I went too wide. They won't even close now. Okay, we'll get back to that later. <laughs> let's check my dad's one he did for me. He set this all up. Uh, so let's see where the 101 is um, set up here. You can see the more. Hopefully you can kind of see the the marks on the flywheel. I'm marking with a, a black marker. There's a mark there. One in the middle and one on the side. Okay, this is working. Yep. Okay, so let's get a ground. Okay. Things are, points are closed, and our lines are just coming to the coil properly now. And it's right on the money. He's got them set perfect. I knew Bobby would. He knows how to do his old McCullough's. Okay, so enough of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna when I get the um, proper um, set up with the protractor and everything like the old days, I'm gonna show you that. So that was a bit of a waste of time, but you get the feel. There's also systems you can put on um, on, on old saws with points and condenser. And I have one here, and I'm going to try it on a 1010. We're going to get and have a running 1010 with the points, and then I'm going to put this. Um, they used to be called Adams, but uh, originally they came from Australia, I think. But there's lots of different ones of these now. What, what are they? What are they calling these? These are from Stens. And they call it an ignition module. Um, what you do, it's just a square little rig here with some wiring. And this will eliminate your points and condenser. So installation instructions. You cut your wire from your breaker points and you join it to the positive part of this, of this unit. And then you can also have your switch wire um, on there too and then then you ground it to to a good ground so I, I i think i used to try to like bolt them on the side of the coil here or you can put put them onto the onto the um uh, covers here right just somewhere where there's a good ground but when i do that 1010 i'll show you exactly how these works i've used them 
a few times on older saws, older stills with points and stuff, and they actually did work. Some of them didn't work, but um, some of them did. So um, well, it's, it was hit or miss years ago. There used to be brown ones, green ones. I think one was for two stroke, one was for four stroke. Yeah, so, you know, like old Briggs four strokes or whatever, right? So anyways, yeah, we'll um, we'll do that test with the Mac 1010. I got uh, a 1010 from uh, Blake in Saskatchewan that I'm going to tear apart and uh, check over. I got a couple other ones too, so I'm going to build build them a runner and I'm going to do a video series on that. Good old copy. So this WAC 101 was brand new, like I said, it was like a three quarter inch crankshaft. My dad took it and put a crankshaft, another crankshaft out of a 101 that's balanced. You can see it's ground on the bottom. That's where they take weight off to, to balance the um, crankshaft properly. So that's cool. It's balanced. This is a um, slightly ported brand new 101. Not done wild. I didn't, I didn't want anything wild. I wanted to keep it a good solid reliable runner for the login shows where it starts every time and goes good not that it wouldn't wouldn't when it was wildly ported so on this i'll show you some features i'm doing i've adapted uh a manifold i believe it was a hartman manifold yes it is it says right on it hartman and it allows me to put like the a Prella a reed cage in it with four big reeds in it and I can get stiffer and lighter reeds uh, for more bottom end or top end but I just put the medium ones in there and it's allowed me to put this beautiful HR191 carburetor on it. This carburetor has been modified from EC Burt in the US which is a famous car builder for um, for carding and other stuff. It's an Ibia top at top cap to it. Uh, beautiful carburetor. This will make it run really nice and tune right. A lot of those old BDC carburetors you get on McCullough's uh, from the old card engine days. You can't, it's hard to get kits now for them and they they worked okay if they're set up right. But this just, I know how to make it work. Got a nice low and high speed jet. I ran many of these on Prella direct drive uh, card engines in my racing days. I know how to tune them right. So that's a nice addition. It's got its own pulse through the manifold here. So I'm able to um, not have to run any um, pulse lines or anything. Also has the um, compression release from the factory. Right there, black button. Make it easier to start for me for the races. You know, we got the original sticker on there. Read your owner's manual. <laughs> That's what I tell people at work all the time. You know, people come in and ask questions, you know, that's something they just bought and stuff. I said, oh, did you read your owner's manual? Owner's manual? Oh, no, I don't know what I did with it. Keep your owner manuals, own your manuals on everything. You never know what you can find in them. So, yeah, this is a nice Mac. I've, uh, the bottom stuffer plate is, um, doesn't have any holes in it where on a, on a regular um, saw you'd have the holes in it to run your um, oiler system for your bar and chain. So we use the oil pot off of like a SP125 or CP and we've just cut off all the oiler stuff or unbolted it and glued it all up with Devcon or JB Weld. Made my own fuel line, quarter inch uh, Tigon with a nice big steel filter in the bottom and that'll run up to my to my carburetor here. Um, as far as choking, I'll just pull it over a few times with my hand over top and that's enough to give it some gas for it to run. Um, I do have a, uh, just a generic pipe I think my dad had built. He, he used to get the Iowa sheet metal shop down the road to roll some pipes to, to a certain old Mac spec. Uh, I'm going to take and pot or sandblast this blue off and um, send it off and get it um, ceramic coated just so it doesn't just so it looks cooler i'll just run it with this for now until i do that though but uh yeah so that's i wanted to show you this motor it's pretty cool um i kind of showed you before but 
I'm going to put it all back together here in the next couple of weeks. And once the snow's gone, we'll get our test block set up. And we'll go out and run it. And see how it goes. Um, I got another one that I uh, got a saw at work. It's a 125. But it's got the 101 engine in it too. So what we'll do is we're going to run this one against the, the one with the, like the stock muffler with the, a 101 cart engine. Bucket will come with me when we do that. Because I'm going to build him one too. Pretty cool setup. The old Max kicked butt years ago for a lot of years in, uh, in logger sports shows all over North America. Some guys had, had odd guy had West Bed 820s, I think they're called. And some guys would take the big old INOs and do up or the Huskies. Not a lot of guys did old INOs up here though. It was mainly 3120s after the McCullers. And then um, some of them were running them on alcohol. There's a fellow back in Quebec that was making the carbs and then running them on alcohol. But it was a pain in the buck. And guys would have to flush their saws every time. If they didn't, if they didn't remember to flush their saws, the alcohol would eat right through the magnesium case and now your saws ruined. So you just had to know after your logging show, plug it back, the gas, regular gas and oil mix back on it and uh, run it so it gets all the alcohol out of it so it doesn't eat your case away. I'm going to be running race gas in this and uh, run it 25 to 1 with probably uh, this stuff here, Motol card oil, 100% synthetic. Great oil, runs very clean. It's used in ship to cart engines and very high performance um, cart motors. So yeah, that's my Macala thing for today. We get back to the shop, put a couple 500s together, uh, 390, 372. There'll probably be a few snowblowers come in again today. That guys couldn't get working or damaged them by hitting rocks and stuff, but the other guys will fix up. Check on the walkasawshop.com online store. Have a great new year. Keep your saw in the wood. Stick on the ice. Be careful out there.